And welcome back to Conrad's Corner. We have, of course, a star on the radio show right here, Katya Gleason, part two of the interview. Katya, thanks again for sticking around. Oh, of course. Thank you. You didn't leave, which no, is nice. I didn't no. offend you. Not yet. You didn't scare me away. <laughs> okay. I didn't scare you away. That's that's what I was worried about. Okay. And all that power of the imagination. You never know what can happen, right? Exactly. So, okay. Now, the second part of the interview, we're going to talk a little bit more about the past. You, as you know, you've overcome a lot to be where you are today, namely a lot of adversity, a lot of bullying as a kid. And you have a documentary, if people want to learn more information, called We Are Human, Yep. which is about 20 minutes long or so. And I watched the whole thing. And more than once, I said to myself, I just don't believe, it's just unbelievable <laughs> how people treated you Well, back it, then. People, people still do it to other people today. I can't comprehend it when I, I hear a story from someone. I just, yeah, it's, it's weird how people's empathy can just disappear and, and you rehear you rehear a story or someone retells a story and you can't comprehend it, but it happens. <laughs> yes, and that that's actually ironic because it does make it very believable because it happens not just in person but also online and, and yep. all that stuff as well. So tell me a little bit about the actual bullying that you faced as a kid. You were well overweight, unfortunately, about 200 pounds. I was. Okay, and I'm yeah. just not judging from pictures. That's what you've, of course, done yeah, on no, the no, and no. said. That's, that's so. what the scale said. <laughs> Scales don't lie. And and that, I'm guessing, was the source of a lot of trouble in school. Yeah. Um, I think, obviously, I, I'd put on a lot of weight and I was bullied. That, that's, that's the label that they were able to give me um, because I was overweight. However, I think due to all of that happening, it gave me a, a lack of confidence and it made me a very vulnerable person and I was vulnerable to bullying because um, there's also a lot of people that aren't overweight and they're bullied for another reason. So it's it's not specifically being overweight or, um, you know, having braces or having glasses. It's it's not it's not that aesthetic reason. It's, it's something deeply emotional. Um, and one thing I like to always remind people is it's never about you if you're being bullied. It's just, it's never about you. It's always about the bully and they're insecure about something or they're angry about something or they're afraid of something and they just don't know how to express it. So they take it out on someone else. What were some of the standout experiences that you had in middle school, high school, is that what you got? Probably what was it? Secondary school, uh, it was, I guess, it was in Australia. It was actually uh, elementary school elementary that, that school. It started. Yeah. Do you um, call it elementary school in Australia? We call it primary school. Okay, but it's the equivalent. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's the equivalent of, of your elementary school. Right. Um, there was actually there was one boy that used to find me on the playground every morning and and physically punch me, um, which is a, that's a rare thing to happen these days. I mean, with all the internet trolling and bullying that that we know of a lot today to to be physically bullied is is a huge deal um especially it's a guy punching a girl yeah that's even more rare He'd, but it's elementary school it, it was so when you, <laughs> if you looked into his family history it it was just something that happened in at his home uh, yeah yeah um when when i when i told my mother about it and later on and we spoke and she's like that that's what happened to his mother because he's his father, you know, was, was abusive. So he thought that's, that's fine. That's normal. So, it, you know, you, how can you blame a child for just reenacting something that happens at home? Well, uh, you when, know, <laughs> when, you're that, when you're that young, it's, yeah. it's, you're very impressionable, obviously. And I'm sure things escalated as you got older and the kids get a little meaner. They do. And a little they stronger. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, uh, when I reached uh, high school, I wasn't physically bullied, but there was a lot of the whole mean girls thing, you know, the manipulative bullying. And um, I'd, I'd been in, in a relationship where he was uh, more of a, a, a psychological abuser. So he would put me down and make me feel worthless. Um, Romantic relationship. I'm yeah, guessing. yeah. 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 My boyfriend sort of and and it, it, and again, I don't it, think like it worked it just, out. Just to no, say the least, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in love, but yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, no, it didn't it didn't work out. Fortunately, because he's very happy now, and I'm very happy now. So, uh, and and again, once someone starts to learn about what they've done to another person, I mean, he's even apologized to me for what he's done, um, and it, it yeah, it doesn't really affect me anymore. I can just talk about it. Yeah. Are you able to forgive? Oh, of course. Of course. Are you able to forget? 
I, I don't think you forget things. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. I mean, yeah. you know, your memory is your memory. Uh, but it, it doesn't it doesn't hold the same uh, uh, emotional strain on me anymore. So I can just remember it as a memory. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't hold anything emotionally. On this day, in, in this stage in your life, do you still face bullying? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Even uh, though, obviously, <laughs> you're no longer overweight. And you're rolling right now in the entertainment industry. I'm guessing probably the bullying is more on the side of jealousy this time around. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's just, it's triggering to people when they see someone um, just trying to live their dreams. Uh, I, I know that there's a lot of people out there that aren't and they want to uh, and they feel entitled to, but they're too scared to, you know, make that jump and, and you've. It, you've got to have yeah. a way to express it. So how else are you going to express it? Try and bring down the person who is doing it. Um, and and I hope that I can, you know, break down that wall and go, hang on, let's let's not be against each other. Let's let's build each other up. And you deserve to live your dreams too. I'm not taking anything away from you by doing what I'm doing. Right. And of course, what I find particularly interesting is the fact that you are in the entertainment industry. Usually when you have kids that are bullied, at least at first, they do whatever they can to blend in. They just want to be like everybody else. That's what they say. And yeah, that's true. the goal of life is to not be like everybody else. It's to not fit in. It's to blaze your own path and to be yourself. And you have done that. And of course, being in the entertainment industry, regardless of how awesome and inspirational you may be, you will always have a crowd of hecklers, hooligans, and haters. I do too. That's the way it is. Really? Oh, of course. No. I mean, uh, this, I would never guess that. Sometimes <laughs> I get a little bit more political on Conrad's Corner, and that's where we get more of the hecklers. Coming, I think. But, well, <laughs> I think I think political conversation is is an amazing thing to have. I mean, you need to um, spark the youth's interest um, because you know that a lot of people are disconnecting yeah. <laughs> these days from from those important topics. But how do you deal with that? I mean, sure, you get the comments online and the cyber bullies, and just do you even address them? Do you just not you just ignore them? What's what's your coping strategy? Uh, some days I, it, they can get to me and I'll cry about it, um, and and I'll I'll search inside for the the reason why it's affected me. Like why do I why do I feel like this person's nasty comments affected me? What what about me do I need to look at? And once I take responsibility for my emotions, I can work through it. And then that comment has no effect anymore. So yeah, I think that's the most important thing is to look for the emotional reason as to why that comment affects you. Because you know it's, you know intellectually it's, it's, not, it's not real. And I'm guessing that <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of your, what you do now, your music and your films and stuff, deal with this kind of stuff, trying to, at least, I guess, address it and then, as you said, build people up. Absolutely. Is there, like, let's go to Shooting Star, for example. Tell me a little bit more about your experience writing that. And was there a particular event in your life that inspired you or is this just sort of a generalized, you can do it and overcome it kind of song? Uh, it's, yeah, it's it started off um, coming from, like the first line is, hey, you in the corner, don't look down. I'm in the corner. Yeah, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, directly, it's directly speaking to that person that I was, I was that person in the corner, the big girl in the corner, looking at someone performing, looking, just looking down, going, I'm never going to, I'm never going to be that. Uh, so I, I just, it was, it was speaking to myself and speaking to those kinds of people that, um, yeah, look at, look at someone that may be performing and wish that they could, they could be that confident or be able to achieve that kind of thing and just see everything as hopeless because actually I was you. So here I am. Right. It's, it's not hopeless. Right. And, <laughs> and, and you tell these stories to, to kids. You're also an inspirational speaker. I think you also work for a child theater company as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, okay. I, I still, I still sort of work with them. They're back in Australia. They're called alpha shows okay. and they tour to primary schools or elementary schools and they, they do rock concerts, but then they also have a theme uh, and I, I used to do those shows and, and I would see the, the girls in the audience that were just like me. And I just, those are the ones I want to speak to. Um, and you do. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, obviously cause I'm not in Australia, I can't do that anymore, but I, yeah, I still talk to the people that are doing it and they're doing an amazing job. It's just, yeah. If, if only America could have a program like that, unfortunately, cause of the school systems being different, it's, it makes it a little bit harder 
to have a, a show like that come into schools, but it would be awesome if they had it. Well, not only that, plus you expose them to uh, to more than just the teacher talking about whatever. I mean, this is this is theater. These are the arts. And I think you starred as Cinderella in one of the productions, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, that, that was my first show. That had to be a lot of fun as well. It was. You know? um, it was because that character and the the issues that, that we were able to deal with with children uh, was about self-worth. And that was one of the big things for me. So I was able to... Uh, process in the show and I was able to show children how to how to get through those worthiness issues and it, it's amazing when children can come up to you and tell you their story like I know a teacher of a, a, a prep child which is the lo- the youngest she said oh it's amazing that you had this show because I have a prep that's anorexic and I just it, I was just I was gobsmacked I couldn't believe that a child that young could even understand body image and, and all that kind of stuff. So it was, yeah, it's, it's pretty special to be able to do that. Yeah, valuable work. You've got an outstanding so. message. And I want to thank <laughs> you for sharing it on Conrad's Corner. And I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, you in the corner, don't look down. I can see the pain in your eyes, feeling so low. Caught in the landslide, we gotta turn the dark in light. You like Jack and Jill, climbing your crazy.